Welcome to Pop Up Art Cafe. I'm Audrey Galix, and we are at Gallery Amy in downtown Decatur on Ponce de Leon. And I'm here with jewelry artist Tal Moran. Tal, I am so grateful that you have agreed to be with us on the Pop Up Art Cafe. I want to acknowledge that we are both hat women. You're rocking that sort of a Western mm -hmm. hat. I've got something that I guess you would see, what, at the steeplechase, something like that? But I think I'm gonna take mine off. How about if we do that? Yes. I'm just gonna peel it off. There you go. Oh my gosh. A little, uh, maybe a bad hair day should have kept it on. But one good thing about this is that we have got some of your art in front of us, your beautiful jewelry. How did you, how did you get started doing jewelry making? Um, I always loved um, stones and minerals and rocks and I always kept them and found them everywhere and always had them in my pockets and so uh, and I loved art and I loved painting my grandfather was a, an artist in Israel a painter and I grew up around art all the time so it wasn't a big uh, stretch to go from that to sculpting to creating in metal and creating art. But I understand it wasn't until you got to the United States that you actually began pursuing uh, your work in jewelry making. What happened? Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was I was traveling around, actually I was traveling out west and uh, drove through the country. And I want to also make note that before we got on camera you mentioned that this was after a particularly stressful time in your life. Yes. It was right after the, the war in Lebanon, the first one in 82. And it was, I was very young and I served in the military and it was a very traumatic experience for me. That rose a lot of questions for me about life and about what are we doing here? What I'm doing here? What is my purpose being here? And how can I make sense of everything that was going on around me? So going on a journey to a faraway place was a very good thing for me. And you were and in your mid-twenties at the time? I was in my, mid, my early mid-twenties, yes. And when I came to, to the U.S. and I started uh, getting in touch with the land, really with the with ocean, with the mountains, with trees, and reading and opening myself up to finding answers to my questions, I uh, found the um, American Indian people. The, the native people. And it connected very strongly for me when I heard uh, one of the wise men say that uh, I, I grew up learning that Israel was the holy land. And it is the holy land for so many people. And he said to me, you, how can you have a holy land if it's not on the holy earth? And that's so the broader it, idea of exactly. what holiness is. And that made, made sense to me that the whole, if we approach the holy earth, then we have a holy land. But if we separate it and we say this is holy and this is not, then this is the, 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 the cause of, of many conflicts. And so, so you ended up traveling to meet with one of the uh, yes. wise people. Yes. And he has uh, become what you consider your grandfather. He your is my grandfather. grandfather, yes. Yes, and his wife, both of them are um, incredibly wonderful people that uh, helped to guide me into uh, understanding uh, my relationship with life, with the trees, with the rocks, with um, the, the things in nature that inspires me to create beauty. So somebody can pick up a piece of jewelry and feel that connection. So why don't we go ahead and pick up one of these pieces. The, okay. the bracelets, I think, is what draws me first. It's a mm -hmm. very interesting design. And perhaps uh, we could explore in what way the connection to the Native American culture inspires mm -hmm. this. And it's very lightweight, this, by the way. I was kind of surprised when I picked it up. Yeah. This is a, it's a, it's a bracelet that I created to look like a twig uh, that comes from the garden. And uh, I was... Uh, wanting to get an inspiration for a collection. And I kept going around and around and around in my head until I 
walked outside and I said to myself, why don't you just go and water the roses and water the garden and, and just be with, you know, be with nature, be with, nature, be with, with life and let, let it happen. So I went and I was picking up this and cleaning up that and I picked up a twig and I was like, huh, look at that. That would be so beautiful because it, it, it just looked so sweet to me. And it was connected to a beautiful tree that I, um, I call it the crow tree because there's a lot of crows that come in on that tree and they all talk all mm -hmm. the time. So I felt that that would be a wonderful way for me to capture that. And so I picked up a few more twigs and I went into my studio and forgot about time. And like 10 hours later, I had all these beautiful designs that, that sparked from that one twig. You know, it's interesting, your reference to forgetting about time is mm -hmm. so true. I think when you're pursuing your art, something you're passionate mm -hmm. about, that, that process of being in flow, you yes. know. Uh, I also, uh, th that, that is so beautiful, and I was wanting you to also speak, we uh, talked a bit before we started on camera, about the pearls here, and that they uh, actually are the result of uh, an interesting process, I guess, that makes pearls, but they're from, there's a connection to the Tennessee River, which I yes. never thought about, pearls from Tennessee. Yeah. Yes, this is a, it's a very interesting story about the uh, in the beginning of the century, we had uh, Mikimoto from Japan that started culturing pearls. In other words, he started growing pearls. And uh, he would take the little oysters and put a little seed beads in them to allow the pearl to create um, around it, to cover, to right. cover it up. And But in that process, what happened is a lot of those, because uh, this is a living being, and they, they died from all kind of infections and things. And it was at the point where the industry was almost completely, you know, devastated. And they were looking for different solutions. And they found this beautiful shell in the Tennessee River here in Tennessee. And uh, through connection with the, P, the local people that uh, one of them actually, his great grandmother was a Cherokee Indian. Here's the connection to nature again. And his grandmother, her family would go dive into the river and pick up the natural pearls. And he actually has a necklace of natural pearls that he got from his great grandmother. Wow. So uh, through connection with, with this person, they found out that the the oysters in Japan and China did not reject this shell. And they were able to grow this wonderful, wonderful pearls. And it created an industry uh, from the US, from the Tennessee River, for from the 30s all the way to the 90s and some today too. And these pearls, it's interesting, I think my assumption about pearls is they're white or pearly white. And these have a more, um, like a bronzy opalesque mm -hmm. kind of a, mm -hmm. a color. color. Mm. Yes, they have uh, different pearls have, again, it depends on the particular uh, oyster animal that, that makes them and the minerals in the water which they grow and many different things like that and it creates the, the different natural color and they come from white to to creamy yellow to pink and of course in the South Seas you have and, and um, the Tahitian pearls that are gray and, mm. and darker color. We have a couple so, of other items here, mm -hmm. the rings, the bracelet, the necklace. This beautiful bracelet is also a very interesting creation that was, uh, I was inspired that same day by the roses. And um, I saw the thorns. And I, I actually like the design of nature, of the, the thorns that are they're protecting the beauty of the rose. So I picked up the, the twigs and, you know, cut them and worked with them and created a bracelet that represents the protection and the strength with the softness of the rose represented by the pearl that always been a very feminine symbol throughout history. In that juxtaposition. And exactly. Very... And the balance between the two. So where do you go from here, and, and what message might you have for our, 
our audience about the creative pursuit? It's a very good question. When I, when I uh, work with the people that come in for design, I love to uh, help them be part of the creation to the level that they want to be. Some people are more open and more free and more connected to their imagination. And some people need a little bit more guidance. So uh, I just say to people to be open and daring and uh, you know, wear what you love and don't put it in a box, in a safety deposit box. Wear your beautiful jewelry, your beautiful pearls every day and enjoy them because this is what they're here for. And you mentioned when we started that when you came to the United States initially, you, your heart was uh, perhaps agitated. It was a stressful yeah. time. Mm -hmm. uh, to what extent perhaps has pursuing the jewelry making your art provided you an opportunity, I would hope, to find more peace? Oh, it's uh, through the beauty. To me, this is beauty. This is reflections of beauty of nature. This is a reflection of beauty of life. And when I understood that I'm here to experience and express life and, and art and beauty as much as I can, then that is what fills me up. And we all have challenges in our lives. We really all have very different challenges. Some of us are born in a war zone. Some of us are born in, in uh, some neighborhoods that are not so friendly. Uh, some women are born in very horrible circumstances. But throughout all these different challenges, we really are all the same people. And so to me, this language speaks to all heart, to all people, to all cultures. It really, the beauty crosses, the beauty of art is, is the key to the heart for me of all people. Tom Moran, thank you so much. Beautiful words. I hope our audience perhaps is in, as inspired as I am to pursue their creativity as a, as a way to, to explore the yes. beauty within all of yes. us. Again, thank you. And thanks to all of you for being part of uh, Pop Up Art Cafe. See you next time.